whole group. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome to the tail end of 2022. I'm wishing you all um, season's greetings. Um, this is Mrs. Kalinda for Lusaka Avocado Multipurpose Cooperative. Today we have a presentation that will be um, given by Mr. Chivesa and Mrs. Chivesa. They will <clears throat> have um, questions at the end of the presentation. Do feel free to ask questions at the end when we start. And um, let me just do the presentation slide. Okay, share. So you should all be able to see the slide at the moment. And I hand over to you, sir, Mr. Chivesa. Good evening, viewers. Uh, today I'm going to present this topic of health, uh, human health benefits of using compost in agriculture. My name is Craig Chongo Chivesa. I'm a lifestyle counselor. I'm a nurse by profession. Next. Next. Next slide. Our learning objective today are to understand how diet can help you stay healthy and to understand that uh, the gym is nothing, but the terrain is everything. Lastly, to understand that modern industrialized diet is rich in cal uh, calories and poor nutrition and is based around sugar, refined carbohydrates and other processed foods, etc. Next. Mm, our introduction, we are living in these uh, days where we have seen before, which we have never seen before and cannot tell what tomorrow holds. We still, we have no control over uh, our environment. But the good news is there are choices we can make that will slice our risk of getting sick. One such choice is to grow our own food using compost, especially as farmers. Next. I'll start explaining by going back to our biology lessons in, in secondary so that we have an idea what really happens in our body at cellular level. Let's revise. The cell is the most the smallest functional unit of the body. Everyone has about three trillion of these. And these are needs like oxygen, water, nutrition, waste elimination, and keeping all poisons out. The same needs, the body also needs them. Let's see at the function, I'll be comparing at cellular level and at the body level of a human how these function together. For example, there's a cell membrane there, if you can see. A membrane compared to a human body is like the skin. It prevents all poisons out. So it prevents the organelles of the cell. Then we have the mitochondrium there, if you can see it. The mitochondrium compared to a human body, I can see it's a stomach. It's a powerhouse. When we eat something, our body gets energy from there for the body to work. Even in the cell, that mitochondria processes food to, to produce energy. We also have uh, where the organelles are suspended, the cytoplasm. In the human body, it's like the blood. It transports nutrients, water, oxygen to and fro, the sources to the uh, body parts. Even here, from the cell wall, the oxygen, water, and nutrients are transported from the cell wall into the organelles inside the body, inside the cell there. The other thing I can talk about is the nucleus. The nucleus is like the brain in the cell. It controls the activities in a cell. In a human body, the brain controls the activities. 
But the difference between the nucleus and the brain in a human being is that the human being, the brain, a person is born with nothing written or on the brain. He gets the surround, what is in the surrounding, what he gets through people, what they are saying. For example, if you tell the child hears you telling someone you dog, you say, then you say, oh, so even a person can be a dog. That is written on the brain. But to the nucleus, someone is born with something on it. From the chromosomes, it has uh, three pairs, three, 23 from the father and 23 from the mother. So they have these chromosomes of genes. So they come with something written on them. That is maybe the, the genes of tallness in the family, or maybe they are light complex uh, complexion. So that's the difference between the brain and the nucleus. Next. We come to how to balance your pH to heal your body. That's where the trick is. If you look at the picture there, uh, there's, there's food on the right and food on the left. Food on the right are those foods which will make the body alkaline. And food on the left are the foods which will make the body acidic. So the normal pH of the, the body works well on a pH of the, of the blood being 7.4. And the neutral food we can talk about or substance is water. Water has a pH of seven. So for the body to work well, we have to strive to have a pH of about 7.4. So we should know how to work around this. If you look at the foods on the left, most of these foods, I can say are processed foods compared to the right where we have most of them farmed food, fruits, vegetables, things like that. And the other thing is the foods on the left, most of them are carbohydrates. And uh, this side, most of them are vitamins or fruits, I can say. They have uh, vitamins and mineral salts. So if we have to balance our pH, we should know that we should eat a lot of foods from the right so that our body can maintain a good pH of 7.4 to work well. Yeah, just to, 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 to add on, um, go, go, going back in the, uh, in the old days, uh, I'll give an example. When um, uh, in the 80s, when President Kaunda was, uh, uh, was leading this country, as a nation, as a people, we were eating uh, foods more on the right than it is on the left, because uh, we used to have a lot of shortages. You, I'm sure those who are there will remember that we used to queue up for, for bread, for sugar, Coca-Cola was not even uh, reachable, but uh, as a people, we ate food more on the right. So as a result, even uh, uh, challenges of uh, chronic diseases were, were not there, they were very rare. Next slide. Next slide. The most people are too acidic and uh, returning to the alkaline state is actually a major piece of the healing puzzle. Acidic body is more prone to many other diseases and disorders, including cataract, osteoporosis, gout, cancer, migraines, constipation, morning sickness, stroke, allergies, diabetes, obesity, Etc. Etc. Acidity in the body can be reversed by eating 80% of alkaline forming foods and 20% of acidic foods. That's the key if you have to balance. And if you want to know whether your body is acidic or not, you can buy litmus paper from the chemist. Every time you wake up in the morning, you put that litmus paper on the, your tongue and see if it's acidic or not. Next slide. 
Now we come to the minerals. Minerals are the naturally occurring inorganic substances. That is, they do not have a carbon atom. Uh, approximately 4% of the body mass consists of minerals. They are 21 essential minerals required by the human body. They are called essential as the body cannot produce them and can, and without them, you can become seriously ill. Next slide. What do minerals do for the body? Like all nutrients, minerals act as cofactors with each other, with vitamins, enzyme systems, thus causing billions of chemical reactions in the body that are necessary for survival, such as even just the muscle to, to contract and relax. We need those cofactors, even the blinking of the eye. We will look at some minerals in the following slide. They are all in our body and the symptoms of deficiency. Next slide. Okay, we have there the first one, which is magnesium. It is an alkaline. Magnesium in the raw in the body, it maintains normal nerve and muscle function. It requires uh, for more than 300 bio reactions. That's a lot. And supports healthy immune system. Carbohydrates uh, metabolism requires magnesium. So if you lack magnesium in your diet, what deficiency or what happens? You have poor complexion, faster heart rate, irritability, indigestion syndrome, and soft bones. Next, iron. Iron maintains uh, or cons main constituent of the hemoglobin or red blood cell. It's uh, used for transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide around the body for building of bones and muscle tissue. When you lack it, you have pale complexion, anemia, low energy levels, and stunted growth. Next. Manganese, it's an alkaline. Manganese helps to form thyroxine. It helps to regulate blood sugar levels needed for antioxidants and enzyme function. Symptoms of deficiency are weak bones, anemia, chronic fatigue, low immunity, hormonal imbalance, and infertility. Next. Next one, we have copper. It's an alkaline. These elements are the ones which are also found in compost. The role of copper is to is required primarily for the absorption and metabolism of iron. So it works together with copper with the iron. If you eat a diet with iron, but there's no copper, iron won't be used because you need copper to be there for iron to be absorbed. The lack of it, you have copper deficient symptoms, which are similar, all these are similar to iron deficiency. That is poor hemoglobin production, pale complexion, anemia, low energy levels, and stunted growth. Next. Zinc. Zinc is also an alkaline. The role of zinc, it regulates uh, regulation of blood sugars, healing of wounds, transfer of carbon dioxide from tissue to lungs. Uh, this uh, transfer of carbon from tissue to lungs, that's why in COVID they were telling us to take a lot of uh, zinc for this purpose. 
the lack is uh, you end up with poor intestinal abs absorption, absence of tests. If you remember those who are having COVID, some of them didn't have they lost the tests and prostate problems. Next, calcium, it's also an alkaline. Formation and of strong bones, it's one of the functions, clotting of blood, normal heart beat, muscle contractions, control of passage of fluids from the cell wall. So this calcium, even at cellular level, it helps for the passage of nutrients and fluids between the outside extracellular and inside the cell in, intracellular. So you see how important it is. The symptoms of deficiency is weak bones, delayed growth, and nervous irritation, and muscle sensitivity. Next. Boron is an alkaline. Boron boosts the bone density, activates uh, vitamin D, affects how the bone handles other minerals, boosts estrogen levels in the older women. Symptoms of deficiency, arthritis, weak bones and osteoporosis, weakness of muscles, weak concentration and memory loss, premature skin aging, worsening of menopausal, and also allergies. Next. Wow, at least this one is an acidic. This one, the role in the body, uh, phosphorus, it is used to build healthy bones and teeth in combination with calcium. So it works in partnership with calcium. It also helps to metabolize carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Also to build nerve and brain cells. The deficiency, symptoms of deficiency, there's poor bone and teeth development, mental fatigue, and feeling of depression resulting from exhausted nerve energies. Sodium, it's an alkaline. The role in the body is with, uh, it works with potassium. Sodium regulates exchange in the outer, out of the cell, the extracellular. It also helps uh, maintain water balance. It is required to produce digestive juices. It helps eliminate carbon dioxide and aids correct nerve functioning. Its deficiency will result in muscle cramps, nausea, indigestion, arthritis, rheumatism, gallbladder, and kidney stones. Um, on sodium, uh, I, would, I would like to, to add something. The other source where we get our sodium is from salt. Now salt, it's in many forms. There is uh, the, the, the refined, the table salt, which we normally find in our, in our shops, the supermarkets. There's also another type, which is called the Malayan. Or here in Zambia, uh, it's found in Luapula in Caputa. Is called the chivwa. So now, when it comes to sources of sodium, the table salt, the refined salt, which um, is found in our shops, only has uh, two elements that is the sodium and the chloride. And usually, uh, this is not the best source. The best is uh, the Himalayan salt or our local salt, which is called chivwa. That was uh, my addition on sodium. Next slide. A healthy balanced diet with plenty of fresh fruits and uh, vegetables should satisfy your daily mineral requirements. However, it is important to know that the mineral concentration of any food depends on the soil 
in which it is grown. That's very important. That is why crops within the compost grown with compost has 16 elements is far better. That crop is far better grown than with D compound, which has only the three elements, which is in nitrogen, phosphorus, and urea. Um, I would also want to comment in the uh, previous presentations when we looked at uh, uh, the composition of compost, we find that uh, compost, <coughs> the minerals, uh, Mrs. Chibes has looked at uh, in the previous slides, uh, the, the boron, manganese, magnesium is found in compost. But when you look at the D compound, D compound has only the three elements. That's the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which means it has a deficiency of other minerals or micronutrients. Now, the other challenge with um, D compound is that uh, it makes the soil acidic. Now, acidity in the soil will, uh, will not make the other nutrients which are available in the soil uh, uh, to, be to be picked or to be assimilated uh, by plants. So that's the more reason why growing of uh, fruit trees, uh, field crops, it's highly recommended that we use compost because as Aria mentioned, it's also important that uh, the, the ground or the soil which we are using, it has all the nutrients. So if there are deficiencies, then even in the plant, at the end of the day, if it's vegetables, they will have deficiencies of those micronutrients. That's why now it becomes uh, important, especially as farmers, that uh, the food we are growing, we grow using compost so that those minerals we are able to, uh, uh, to, to have them as we, as we partake of the foods. The other example I can also uh, give, if, if you look at Zambia, well, we've, we've come to adopt maize as our staple food. Now, when we look at maize, we, we normally grow our maize with G compound and urea. So which means uh, our maize has very little of other nutrients because of what we are using as basil and the top dressing. So it becomes important that uh, uh, especially those of us who have an advantage of doing farming, uh, doing gardening, that we, we adopt the use of compost. Now, in the absence of uh, compost, and if we are using decompound only, then it means we have to buy other uh, products like soluble, which has other micronutrients, which are not found in a decompound, so that our plants will have all the nutrients, one, for their productivity, and two, to support our health. Next slide. Non-communicable diseases or NCDs, what are these? These NCDs are lifestyle diseases. Things like hypertension, diabetes, arthritis. Most of these, you can control them just using diet. Next slide. In conclusion, there is a saying by Thomas Edison, which says, the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. Um, I would also want to add on that one. The, the situation which uh, we have when somebody is diagnosed with uh, for example, diabetes. The doctors will recommend 
that uh, they change their, um, the type of foods they consume. For example, uh, they will be advised that uh, they stop taking breakfast meal, meal. they start consuming uh, raw meal, they stop the white bread, they start consuming brown bread, or if they have access to finger millet, uh, that will be the best. Why? Because uh, I'll give an example of uh, rats. When rats uh, find a maize seed, they will, they will not eat the whole seed. They will eat the gem. Uh, in Bemba, we say akamutima. That's where uh, uh, the nutrients are loaded. The other white stuff is as uh, starch. Now, when this maize goes for milling, uh, for example, the, uh, the big millers we have around, you make breakfast, rora meal. So when they do the processing, they will remove the fiber as well as the uh, that gem, the, the white stuff is what they will package as breakfast. Then the maize bran is what they will add with other um, uh, nutrients to make feed. So as human beings, we are consuming maize whose other nutrients have been removed, the vitamins, the minerals. So what is remaining is just the white stuff called breakfast. Now. In other schools of thoughts, breakfast is referred to as empty calories because in the digestion process, in the absence of uh, other minerals, the cofactors in that maize meal, the body has to find from other sources, whatever has been stored. As earlier mentioned, 4% um, of uh, our body mass is made up of minerals. Now, if the food which we are consuming has deficiencies, but at the end of the day, for that starch to be broken down through the process of digestion and assimilated in our bodies, the body will need, for example, vitamin B. Now, in that white breakfast meal, the vitamins and the minerals have been removed. So the body will start getting from other sources. At the end of the day, we are going to have the deficiencies. Now, it's these deficiencies which have brought in issues of lifestyle diseases, the diabetes, the cancers, the arthritis, asthma, and many others. So as a people, it just becomes imperative and important that we go back to the basics. What are the basics? We grow our own food because when food is taken from the farm to the factory, processed, then back to the table, even if the chemistry changes through the heating process, the chemicals they add there for extraction, at the end of the day, they also add preservatives so that they have a long shelf life. So a combination of these factors is triggering now these health challenges which we are having, which we are witnessing as a people. So those are the few words we had to share on the subject of human health benefits of using compost in agriculture. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. This was very, very interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing a visual of actually the actual components that you were you were explaining as in what is in the compost specifically if you made it a certain way in terms of ratios because i know mr chivesa you gave us uh, three presentations on making compost and and all three ways were different and produced something different so it would be good to know which one makes the most impact to heal our bodies i've never seen it presented in this way in terms of how it actually impacts our, our, our health and well-being. So would there be any chance of having a visual eventually somewhere along the line? 
Well, I'm sure as uh, the, the, the Lord provides, we, 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 might, we might not give a time frame, but uh, oh. as the health and the time allows, we, 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 we might look at that as well. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. A lot of people have just been joining and I've been saying how interesting it is. And I'm sure a lot of people are just as surprised as I am at how what an impact it has. Um, may I ask in terms of when when you put had this in mind, which one of the composting uh, formulas is best for the for the human body? Or does that depend on how your current um, health is at the moment. I don't think I've explained it perfectly, but basically, if I was somebody who had arthritis or diabetes, how do would I then amend my compost to make sure that I get the best, um, in, the best what I need for my body, or would it not make a difference? Well, when it when it comes to composting, uh, to start with. Just the use of compost, it gives yeah. you an advantage uh, in that the other minerals will be made available to the plant. Then in, as human beings, we consume the plant. But in our making of compost, it's important to have variety. Now, we talked of two methods of composting. There is the anaerobic, the one where we dig a pit, then we are throwing in any material, everything we are throwing in. When that pit is full, we cover it, we wait for six to nine months, then we, uh, we, we, we dig uh, the stuff which has composted and use it. With that one, because there is very little uh, my, my fungi and the bacteria involved. That's why it takes long. But when you use the other method, which is the aerobic or thermal composting, the one which uh, uh, I made a presentation on, with this one, the beauty is you can uh, uh, bring in different uh, sources of leaves, you, you also apply the, the manure there and uh, you do the turning. Now, because of the increased uh, microbial activities, the thermal one will give us more benefits because now once you start making, you'll see that when you are doing the turning, you, you will notice the termites, you will notice uh, in Bemba, they call them within sender. You will notice uh, uh, worms, a, a lot of what we call soil life, which is a general term of life in the soil, including uh, cockroaches. You will find them in uh, compost chips. So the thermal one gives us more benefits because of the increased life activities, which takes place in the decomposition process of the thermal one or aerobic, because it uses oxygen in the process of decomposition. Oh, I see. Thank you so much. That was very interesting. I didn't realize that, actually. I wasn't thinking of it in that sense, but thank you. Now it makes sense, and I'll be able to go through your thermal presentation, and I'll share that with everybody else who would like um, to look at that. Um, were there any other comments you wanted to add, Mr. and Mrs. Teresa, before we concluded? I'm looking through the chat at the moment and the way people were just commenting on how good it is and they want to know if the presentation will be made available to them. And yes, I will be sharing the presentation if it's okay with Mrs. Chivesa. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine, you can share. Uh, what, what we can say is that uh, uh, there is this famous quotation which says, health is your greatest wealth. Yes. So as much as we want to make money, 
we must make sure that we are health ourselves first. Because um, the late Steve Jobs on his deathbed said a few words. One of them which he said was, uh, you cannot delegate illness. Now, Steve Jobs died from pancreas uh, cancer. And uh, these cancers and other non-communicable diseases are basically, in, in summary, or lack of a better term, as a result of poor nutrition. Poor nutrition, how? Because the food which we are eating, which is uh, from that uh, uh, pH balance we, sh we showed, we are eating 100% of the stuff which is on the left, processed. And the good part, the, what we might call waste, these are poor. So everyone was rushing for breakfast. Now, what has happened? We have now these challenges. So as farmers, we must make sure that uh, we even gave an example last time with the Bazungu farmers. Their wives have gardens where they grow food which they eat organically. The food which they sell to us, them they don't even touch it or consume it. Why? Because they know. So even us, when we know, we need to we need to apply, we need to try. Let's try a bit and see where we'll get. Last year I'll give an example of Mr. Nyerenda. Uh, Mr. Nyerenda is this year 74 years old. Uh, he once worked as a police officer and retired in um, 1989, somewhere there. So when he retired together with the family, they decided to move to the farm. And uh, like everyone else, they were growing maize uh, using uh, the the synthetic fertilizers, they're also keeping uh, animals. Not until around uh, 2018, when they learned about compost making and uh, they embraced it. Of course, they saw the economic benefits of it. They, they, they didn't see any health benefits. But in between, before that time, uh, Mr. Nirenda used to have uh, to experience body pains or what is termed in medical terms, inflammation. The cells inside the membrane of the cells were inflamed as a result. Most of the times he had pains visiting the hospitals. But last time we visited them with other farmers to go and see how they are doing and the benefits of compost. He said one thing which uh, uh, got us encouraged as a testimony that uh, the pains which he used to experience, uh, they, they just disappeared. He didn't know at what point. Why? Because now the maize they, uh, they are growing and consuming, they are, using, uh, they are using compost. So we are made to believe that uh, uh, compost can really help us uh, stay healthy, reduce on the time we spend going to see doctors. Uh, the last three somebody said, the food we eat, one quarter of that keeps us health. Three quarters keeps the doctor health. What does it mean? Because we frequent the hospitals and now we have to pay for the medical bills. It means from that food, from that plate of Unshima, we are also sustaining the life of our friends who are in the pharmaceutical industry and the doctors. Why? Because we are going to the hospitals frequently to pay for our medical services. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much, Mrs. Tivesa, for your time and for a brilliant presentation. We appreciate it very, very much. 
just a message to everybody else. Next week on the 22nd of December, we have a presentation on organic farming by WSO talks about the benefits of organic certification, which will tie very well in with Mr. Chibesa's last presentations and Mrs. Chibesa's presentation today. So thank you again, sir. Thank you again, uh, Mrs. Chibesa, and have a good evening. You are welcome and uh, compliments of the season to everyone, all, to all the farmers. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.